Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So is it okay shall we start again Yes sir I think Yes sir Okay so I hope uh, all of you are here like right? Yeah, this is taking the attendance. Uh, so tells tells me when you are coming in and going out. That is good. Okay. Uh, so what we are doing? What I thought is to, usually I write a lot on the blackboard or uh, the board. So what I thought I last uh, few days I got for myself something like this. There is a so okay. I have to share the screen. Just a minute. share the content and uh, you have to tell me if you can see it okay i think can you see this yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. now what i think i'll do is i'll write on this hopefully it will be as good as we can get that is the best we can do let me see this helps me to write on this i hope you can see now is it clear hydrostatics and yes sir okay so what i'll do is i'll try to write on this and uh, the usual blackboard will be replaced by this so we'll work with this right. so the course is hydrostatics and stability not very easy to write on this but it's okay yeah so what we will be doing is basically first we will be dealing about the details of the ship let us go slowly this part you should be very clear because the rest of your course in naval architecture will depend upon this so details of the ships ship in marine construction and welding you will talk you will learn about the ship structures there there will be a little more on the details on the structures of the ship this here we are talking about the main details of the ship then the principles of flotation principles of flotation as you might be aware there are uh, rules like the archimedes principle form i mean the uh, laws like the archimedes principle and um, uh, the stevens theorem which is also which is we are going to do all that anyway so we'll do the principles of flotation then we go to what are known as the conditions of stability so the conditions of stability uh, these are the basic conditions of stability for a ship to float upright so till now we did mention that uh, the ship should float first of course the ship should float that is the first thing but it is also important that the ship floats upright so so you can you know you cannot have a ship if it is like this it cannot float like this all the time so that is not allowed so you have to have a ship that floats upright so this is the upright condition so that is one thing those are the conditions of stability we will come to things like gm bm all those things a lot of things on there then we will go into more advanced a little more advanced more advanced conditions of uh, okay so more advanced conditions of uh, stability and uh, we will deal a little bit about waves and uh, we'll finish the course by then now uh, we need to figure out how to do the um, grading this time you know how the grading is left to us this time uh, it's called a continuous evaluation process this time now what it exactly it means nobody is clearly defined it but it means something like probably i should give assignments as the course goes on and there will be no mid semester there will be no end semester you know that you, other courses they would have told you that already now the tell me what do you want what kind of uh, what kind of uh, what should i follow for uh, assignments and all is that what you would like to have assignments like every week one assignment or something like that is that is that what you want Yes, 
Very well, thank you. That'll be fine, no? Okay, the only thing is that this week I cannot have because I haven't yet figured out how to use the assignments module of this uh, MS Teams. So, but what we'll do is we'll have assignments. Um, I will say maybe attendance will carry some marks, definitely. Some 20, uh, 20 or 30 percent marks can be for attendance. So you attend all the classes. Then, um, then some we'll have some assignments. So continuous grade, uh, continuous grading in that sense. Um, now, how to do that assignment part is still uh, I have to see. So we'll we'll go into that next week. We are, by that time, I will figure out probably how to deal with that. Okay. So what we'll do today is we'll just introduce ourselves to the course, the basics of the course, the hydrostatics of the course, basic hydrostatics. So as I have, I don't know if you can see it, but I have put two. Uh, class materials like the two class materials. I have put two books there. Now, where to see that? I am not sure. I hope you can see that. Uh, one is uh, so basically. to be used. Um, these are the two, one, two basic standard books in hydrostatics. The first one is a book called um, book by Adrian Biran. Adrian Biran. Uh, it's the author's name and it is a book on ship hydrost hydrostatics and stability. That is the name of the book. Uh, so actually I have a I have opened that uh, book here. And so I'll be going through that. You, you cannot see this, but I'll go through that in that. Um, or from this end, I'll just explain it here. That seems to be better for me. Then there is a book by called Merchant Merchant Ship Stability. This is by an author named Lester. So it is by uh, by uh, this this book is basically got a lot of problems, uh, you know, a lot of uh, worked out examples. So what you can do is uh, if you have the book, you if you cannot take the book from here, I'll email it to you. It's not a problem. I can. That's what I usually do. But I think you can pick it up from here. I have put it in the uh, classroom materials. So you have this uh, merchant ship stability is basically got a lot of um, uh, worked out examples and what I do is for my assignments. We used to have assignments last um, year also. We had a continuous assignments, but main portion of the uh, the marks were for uh, the mid semester and end semester. That's all. But uh, we had a section for um, assignments, but this time it will be completely that assignments. So we'll um, we'll do that. So those assignments, the problems I mainly take from this merchant ship stability book. So I strongly suggest that you uh, take a look at this book. It's got a lot of problems. So if you will have to sit and solve all the problems, I'll do many of the problems in the class. Um, so as we go on, because I always find that you get more, you understand the subject more or you seem to get a grasp of what I'm talking about more when you do these problems rather than just explaining the details of um, this um, uh, of this subject okay so these are the two books that we will be using so i have here the book adrian biran so i have opened that up let us start from it um, so basically this is first of all we go for what we call as the basic marine terminologies Marine terminologies. So, as you can see, we usually draw a ship, and this is where the water is. So, this is how you usually represent in this course. From from now on, we'll represent it like this. We will. Uh, this is the ship, and usually you write here W L. This stands for W L stands for water lines. Um, okay, water line. It is the region where the you know the air and the water at that that height that region is known as a water line 
in this as you, you probably wouldn't have done but um, you know that there are a lot of waves also in the ocean you know there are a lot of waves and they produce a different st uh, style of pro problems in case of this it may it may for instance this the free surface would become like this we are not going to do those things in this course this is the basic course on hydrostatics and stability we will not do waves in this format very little of some trochoidal waves we will do at the end but other than that nothing more of waves the all the water lines we are consider, considering are all in calm seas okay so it will be like the first one i drew the horizontal line so that is the that is what we are dealing with okay then okay so what do we have okay. so first we take a ship suppose we have a ship like this uh what we say this is the front part of the ship and this is the back part of the ship so usually we call the front part of the ship as the bow of the ship and the aft part of the ship as the stern of the ship so i'll just mention it or it's better actually drawn i think lot of problems so we have so we have a ship like this now remember actually we will draw the ship in a better form this is how we draw it usually ship i am taking so much time this is the first time so i hope you can put up with me for the first time like this okay oh finally we got something so this is how a ship looks like okay the aft part of the ship so this part this part of the ship is called the stern and this is known as the bow so this is the bow of the ship and this is the stern of the ship this is also called the forward part of the ship and this is known as the aft part of the ship aft so the aft part of the ship and the forward part of the ship and it is also called as bow and stern and what usually you have it, it is usually like this you know you ha you have a like thing like this and here usually you put something like this this is a propeller so at this part of the ship you put the propeller of the ship uh, propeller of the ship you know as the propeller rotates it produces the thrust which drives the ship forward so this is the and just behind the propeller you will have like this something here this is known as the rudder rudder mean so i'll write here propeller propeller you uh, you would be familiar with what it is it, it is used to produce the thrust required to run the ship and then we have the rudder rudder is used for uh, directional motion of the ship that is the for changing the direction of the ship direction of motion of the ship so you use the rudder rudder is also there so here so you here you have the propeller and just behind that you have the rudder now uh, so this is before we go into the details of stations and uh, buttock lines and all let us look at the basics terminologies of the ship then so when we say when we look forward or forward of the ship like when you look like this if i stand here and look like this you know if the ship is there and i am looking from the back 
so this when you look like this the right part of the ship so i cannot show it here the right part of the ship is known as the starboard side of the ship and the left part of the ship is known as the port side of the ship so we here we have the starboard and port side of the ship so starboard is the right hand side and port is the left hand side as you look from the back you know as you look from behind you look forward you get this so this is also known once you know this then uh, we will see port and starboard then um, yes then we talk about something known as the principal dimensions of the ship ship be there okay so then we have we have there is something which we call the principal di principal dimensions principal dimensions of the ship now uh, this is also known as the principal particulars of the ship sometimes sometimes it's known as the particulars of the ship as you can guess these are the basic things you need to know about a ship when you are starting to design the ship the first one of course is the length of the ship so the length of the ship as this figure can show there are a couple of lengths actually when you it's not enough to say the length of a ship because there are couple of lengths which are used as in different uh, i know with different context uh, uh, in different situations we use these different names one there is something which we call as loa it is known as the length overall this is the this is the distance starting from here going up to here the complete the overall length of the ship it is from the aft aftmost so this will be the point it will start from here and it will go up to here this is the maximum length of a ship then uh, comes something known as l it is written in two forms lbp or lpp both are same perpendicular to length perpendicular to perpendicular or length between perpendiculars lbp or lpp so this this is basically now what does this mean what we do is we can divide this whole sh ship like this i am going to divide the whole ship into if so if i have a ship like this i am going to divide it like this so these lines or these planes in fact these lines are known as stations stations okay these lines so basically we start from a station 0 this is not the station 0 it's drawn and i haven't described what is station 0 yet let's say this is station 0 this is station 1 2 3 4 5 like this up to station 10 let's say starting from 0 it goes up to station 10 these are basically uh, divisions of the ship i mean the whole length of the ship is divided into uh, this whole uh, into this uh, different sections so the first one the one at the uh, at the aftmost side is known as the aft perpendicular aft perpendicular aft perpendicular this is the ap this is known as ap then the one at the front most the one which we is which is at the forward most is known as the forward perpendicular forward perpendicular it is fp so now we have ap and fp so these are known as the two perpendiculars in naval architecture in naval architecture these are the two perpendiculars there is an aft perpendicular and there is a forward perpendicular okay so this is the aft perpendicular and this is the forward perpendicular and the distance between these two perpendiculars is what we call as lbp length between perpendiculars or lpp length from perpendicular to perpendicular so you have 
so this is basically what is meant by a perpendicular and a um, length between perpendicular so we now see that we have so you can see the distance is it is not exactly the same you know the length overall is this whole distance whereas the length between perpendiculars is only this now there is another length now okay now the question comes how do we define so there is one more line here i told you there is a line usually you have i'll try to make this a little cleaner So, um, so we have, me, yeah, yeah. Sir, yeah. can you full screen the paint? Full screen the thing. Okay. This is okay. I don't think I can make it bigger than this anyway. Uh, yeah, this is okay. Okay. I, is it okay now? Is it better? I think it'll be. It's a little better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you can make this also a little bigger probably. Oh no, uh, probably it's better like this. Okay, uh, then uh, so we have the half the half perpendicular forward perpendicular. Now yeah, now we define. Now we have to see how how do we define? See, this is the basic introduction, and um, the course is generally very easy, as it is said among the uh, de uh, department courses. This is one of the easier courses, but uh, people don't get good grades because I don't know people take it too lightly. But there is one thing: if you don't know the don't know this contents of this course you cannot do anything in the I just hold for a minute uh, just, have to do just a minute sorry so you are muted so we can't hear you Somebody muted you, sir. Sir, you are muted. Sir, we can't hear you. Sir is not present there, I think. You left the meeting. Sir, besides the leave button, there is a microphone like button. Just strike, no strike, and strike at the left. So please click on the microphone button, sir. Now can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How, so yes, how sir. did it be yes, so far sir. then? Oh, when I it happened by itself. No sir, someone has muted you. Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Anyway, now oh, that's why you are in. Now you can hear. No, that's okay. So then there is no need for a headphone or anything. So that's what I was telling. I will try to bring that. So uh, please don't do these kind of things. If somebody is muting me and all, that's all childishness. Uh, don't do such things. Uh, okay. So here you are saying, sir, we can't hear you. I guess you are muted. Okay. I cannot see your shared screen. That I don't know what to do. I don't know what this one notes one notes can be done. Okay, so let us continue with this. I hope you can hear me now. If you cannot hear me, tell tell me. Uh, that's the right thing. Okay, then how do we define? So as I was saying, how do we define uh, the half perpendicular and the forward perpendicular? 
now half perpendicular as i told you here we have it's like this that this part alone i'll uh, look at it so this is how it will look like the propeller okay the propeller will have a shaft it has a shaft this is known as a shaft of the propeller and it is connected to the blades of the propeller there will be a propeller like this and here there will be a rudder a rudder like this so in front of the propeller or in behind the propeller whichever way you are looking at it so you will have a rudder like this now the rudder will have a center and this is known as and when you this half perpendicular is defined as to be going through the center of this rudder stock it is known as the rudder stock basically the centroid of the rudder so that is that is where so the line the half perpendicular actually is defined as going through the center of that and then you have the this is so this is the half perpendicular this is the half perpendicular this is how it is defined uh, then uh, then in the front here actually it should have been station 10 but let's see this one is known as the forward perpendicular now this forward perpendicular is usually defined as the intersection between the water line this is the water line okay just remember that term water line is usually the water line where the air meets the air meets the water uh, water that interface so water line so where the water line meets the bow of the ship so this is the bow of the ship where the water line meets the bow of the ship that region that line we draw a line there and that line is known as the forward perpendicular so when we get a ship we define its half perpendicular like this forward perpendicular like this we divide it usually into 10 equal uh, equal intervals and we call them and we have usually starting from 0 to 10 you will have 11 stations so this is a general general uh, general um, method followed in in hydrostatic in not in hydrostatic in, in shipyards anywhere and this is not so, so you will have these stations from 0 to 10 10 equal intervals and um, um the zero as the half perpendicular and 10 as the forward perpendicular Th that is a mistake here it, so it is not this is not 10 this is this is 9 and this is 10 so you will have like this 10 Uh, you will have uh, 11 stations so as you can see here there are 11 stations not to look at this okay so these are basically what we mean by half perpendicular forward perpendicular of a ship then okay after perpendicular forward perpendicular bow of the ship then we have like uh, we have defined to move the whole thing then we have couple of things we have as i told you we talked about the length of the ship so we had the length overall length between perpendiculars and remember i showed you a water line so the length of the water line length of the water line is also another length that it is the length between the you know where the water line touches the aft and the forward bow aft and bow when stern and bow when wherever they hit uh, though the water line hits those that is uh, called as the length between length of the water line so you have lwl lpp loa uh, these are the main lengths that we use in uh, this section then uh, then of course you have the breadth of the ship now this is usually called as in naval architecture term initially it used to be called as beam of the ship so you call it as beam of the ship so it is basically implies the breadth of the ship so usually and it represents the maximum breadth of the ship so it is the and if you and you should know that a ship any ship mostly we are talking about larger ships you will have basically the maximum thickness or the not thickness maximum breadth at the center at the midship so at the midship you will have the maximum breadth like the ship is there ship is there it's usually around this mid middle region 
that you will have the maximum breadth of the ship. So that is known as a beam of the ship. Then beam of the ship. Okay, let that go. Uh, then, then the things that we talk about are three. So after length and breadth, we come to what is known as the draft of the ship. There are two spellings for this draft of the ship. It is usually spelled as D-R-A-F-T, which is the American spelling draft or it used to be called as DROT, D-R-A-U-G-H-T, which is basically the British spelling. So the draft or the DROT, basically both represent the same thing. So if you have a ship like this, now this is known as the draft of the ship. It is, and this is known as the depth of the ship. These are two terms, as you can see what it means from the figure. I mean, I don't have to explain anymore sir, what it is. Sir, can you yes. hear me? Yes. Sir, there is a problem. Uh, you define the forward perpendicular where the water line meets the bow of the ship. Right? You meet, yeah, forward perpendicular is where the water line meets the, this thing, yes. The bow of the ship. As the bow. load increases in the ship, so water line changes continuously according to the load. Yes, it is defined so, for usually. Yes, yes, that is a good question. Usually it is dis, uh, that I didn't mention. Now, usually all these things are designed for something known as a design waterline. OK, there is something known as a design waterline, which is basically actually if you look at the ship, there will be a line drawn on the ship on the side of the ship. One waterline, which is very important. Everything is defined with respect to that. So that is that is a question, right? I think that is what you are saying, because the waterline can change, obviously. When weights are added to the ship, the ship will sink. In fact, that is what you are going to do in the rest. But there is something known as a design waterline, which is fixed. So, and this, as you keep, but the fact remains that as you keep on putting weights, the draft keeps on increasing. This is basically the Archimedes principle that is coming as the next chapter. So, as you can see, the draft will keep on increasing and the depth will keep on, uh, depth will remain the same. But, and there is one more term here, this one. That is the depth minus draft. This is usually known as a free boat. This distance. This. This is known as a free boat. Please remember these terms. Like when you are, whatever you are doing in the um, department, you these are basic things, basic nomenclatures that you will need to know. So remember these things. Depth and draft and all is like a like draft is going to be the most important term probably in this course. So then the free board, free board is something you should know, of course. Then we can have other things. There are some other things as well. For example, when you have like this a ship, usually you will see that the ship is like this. Okay, not not like a U, a very faint. It's been highly exaggerated in this figure, but there is a faint decrease and an increase. So here, this is known as shear. S H E E R. So this is known as shear aft, whereas this is known as shear forward. So there is a shear that is that slight increase in. The, this is known as a deck and so slight increase in that shape, uh, slight curvature, it goes up in, that, in this format. Again, I told you, tell you, don't draw like a U or anything. It's nothing like that. It's just a very small, faint, uh, very faint curve. So very faint, this thing. And then, then similarly, we can have another thing. Suppose you look at the ship from the other, other way around, like if this is the ship, Suppose you look at it like this, then you know that you will have a section like this. This is what we mean by this drawing. It is known as a cross section. This is so it's a little curved. This is known as actually a cross section. And here also we will have a 
uh, water line. This usually you write it like this again, W L. Now this line also, this is the deck. Okay, this is the deck. It is not usually like this. It is like this. like this it's slightly like this the reason for that actually if you think a little bit you can tell me what would what would be a reason to make a, a deck a slightly curved like this you tell me just think uh, it's a very simple reason actually you can think logically it will come why what is the point of doing that um, what is it? See, the reason is this. It's very simple. Usually, when a ship moves, due to some reasons, maybe there is a wind, there is a very strong wave, etc. Water can come on this. Water yes. come. So and so, when you have water coming on to this, it makes much sense if you have it like this. Because water will just flow out like this. Okay, water will flow out and it makes more sense. And by the way, the water that comes on to the deck while the ship is in motion, is usually known as green water. The reason it doesn't matter, but it's known as green water. And usually to push the green water out, you usually have this thing. And this curvature that I showed for the side, this thing is known as a camber. Camber. You might have done in uh, aerofoils. Okay, if you have done, I don't know if you have done. If not, you will be doing fluid mechanics this semester or next semester. Uh, I'm not sure. So in that, you will come across this term very clearly. And this is known as a camber. The slight curvature is a cam camber. And it is the reason for that is, as I told you. Then 